Mansour is going to score and Penrith are in front. Mansour. Now for Lua. He floats the ball for Mansour. Hey guys, I'm Josh Mansour and I'm down here at Vale Tudo Botany and I'm going to show you what a gym session looks like in pre-season. The session goes for roughly 90 minutes. Uh, we'll start off with a warm-up and during that session we'll either target our upper body or our lower body. Uh, generally in the middle of the week we'll probably do our upper body and later in the week we'll do our lowers um, as we're going to be running throughout the most of the week. So the, what we're trying to achieve from the gym sessions is obviously the uh, growth aspect um, and obviously to get stronger. And we want to kind of be as specific as we can when we step on a footy field. So there's a lot of Olympic movements as well that we do. So like a lot of shrugs, uh, a lot of cleans, uh, deadlift jumps. So power, uh, trap bar deadlifts are probably my favorite exercise when it comes to generating force from the ground. Um, so you can do so much with this. You can obviously go down and you can really jump off the ground or you can just use it as a strength exercise and start loading up the bar and just predominantly use it as a nice um, strength building exercise focus. So generally you want to pause at the bottom and then you want to control on the way down. Sticking the landing is very important, obviously, because you want to really get that stable, those stabilizing muscles and control that, that drop. So this exercise is great, particularly for outside backs. The main thing we need to do is obviously catch bombs, and part of that involves a lot of jumping. So the higher you jump, the easier it is to take that ball. The reps and the quality is what counts the most. Uh, you're not really too focused on the weight. You're more focused on the quality of reps that you're producing out of, those, out of the exercise. So, like traditionally with a trap bar deadlift, if I was just going to focus on strength, I'd probably aim for higher weight, lower reps. Uh, if, I'm if I'm doing an explosive kind of exercise, I'll probably focus around four to five reps, but very low, low weight. It focuses on a lot of key muscle groups um, throughout your whole body. So mainly from the waist down, your glutes, hamstrings, quads, calves, um, all those main muscle groups that you need to generate power. It's taken off the weight of, of the bars, which is the hardest part. Uh, so upper body would mostly consist of bench press uh, as one of our most uh, used exercises because it kind of simulates uh, throwing off a defender. Now I'm going to do my first working set. I want to probably try and target around 10 reps, uh, nice and controlled probably with a bit of tempo, so two seconds down and a nice explosive push to complete my rep. So let's go. But then we'll superset it with maybe like a power movement. So medicine ball, medicine ball throw against the wall, that'll, get, that'll stimulate a, like a palm, even a push up. So going down and just really generating enough force to kind of really explode off the ground. So if you've got a defender on top of you, you really want to try and throw them off and play the ball. Strength, power movement. So I'll line my back with the medicine ball and I'll just throw the medicine ball. So bench press, uh, the most I've actually lifted for one rep was 170 kilos. Um, that was a real struggle, but I was able to push it out. The most I've ever seen, uh, I think it was me. I broke the record at Penrith, I, I, hold the, I hold the record. Maybe it's been broken, I don't know, but more well, definitely not in the backs anyway. Most I've lifted for three reps was 145. Um, and yeah. <laughs> and that's done. All right, so now chin-ups, uh, probably the same kind of process. Uh, probably go for four reps, uh, four sets, sorry. Uh, and I'll probably want to target around eight reps. The actual correct way to do a chin up, okay? You gotta be at a full hang. Start as a full hang, okay? And it has to be chin over the bar. That's chin up. Start again at full hang, and then chin over the bar. Start with body weight, and then from there, probably start, lift, uh, start adding the weight on. So I'll probably get a uh, weight belt. I'll add on five, 10, 15, or maybe 20 kilos. We'll see how we go, but again, Chins are my strong point. So our main strength exercises are pull-ups and then we're super setting that with just some resistant band rows. With the bands, they're just great because obviously the further away you are, the more resistance you have. And in rugby league, when it comes to pulling, you're fighting for a lot of resistance. So an attacker trying to pull away from you. So best at pull-ups that I've personally seen would probably have to be Dylan Edwards. Uh, he's kind of, 
like the pound for pound king out in Penrith. He's super strong, super fit. Sleep is extremely important. Uh, you wanna try and aim for like seven to eight hours of sleep, I might. Um, sleep is probably one of, one of the most uh, powerful tools you can towards your recovery. Uh, it's not only helping you physically, but it's also gonna help you cognitive wise. All right, sled push. It's probably one of my favorite power exercises because it's the most specific towards a rugby league player. Um, obviously pushing the sled, you want to generate enough force and that could be st uh, stimulated like trying to bust through a defensive line or as a defender, you really want to kind of explode off that, that line to try and make a tackle as well. So a lot of, a lot of uh, variations you could use with it. You obviously can push it um, and also can be used as a pulling exercise as well. Just a touch of rope around the sled and pull in towards you. So you're getting nice and low and you're creating that 45 degree angle. And that's important when you're a runner as well. It's the most strongest point you could possibly be. So it's... I'm getting a bit tired now. All right. So the way you probably want to push the sled with, you can go between anywhere from well, maybe 20 kilos to 40 kilos. You wouldn't want to go more than 40 kilos, but it has to be done really fast and explosive. If you're not getting that power, if you're not getting that explosive movement, the workout's pointless. We're not, we're not, we're not, we need to push fast, move the sled fast. So I need to get my breath back. <laughs> Whoo! So preseason is all about setting your foundation throughout the NRL season. Uh, in preseason, you want to be targeting higher reps and higher volume of weight uh, compared to in season. So whatever you have in the preseason and what you've developed there, you pretty much want to hold and maintain throughout the season because you obviously got, got to take into account the games and you need at least two days to recover. And to be totally honest, you're probably getting at least one or two, if, if you're lucky, or weight sessions a week. So uh, it's vital, extremely vital, that whatever you get in pre-season, um, you can hopefully maintain that throughout the year. You've got a guy that does a complete full pre-season to a guy that only does half of it. The guy that does full, the whole pre-season is gonna get all the gains possible for every, every single training session, the reps he gets out of it. Ah, so rotating is also very important when it comes to rugby league. Um, generate enough force to kind of obviously throw a defender down or try and shrug a defender off. So we try to do core pretty much towards the end of our workout. But saying that, during the whole workout itself, we'll have an element of doing core. So if you're doing a squat, you obviously need a strong trunk to control the, the bar and the weight and not make sure you're not obviously loading up your lower back because that's a big no-no. You're using your core pretty much in every, every muscle group you do, um, uh, exercise you do, but this is just specific, specifically targeting core. So these are called torsionator rotators, ro rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate to the hip and twist up. Arms are straight and it's my rotation in my trunk that's going to get this bar up. Last but not least, these are pretty much standard or a staple exercise when it comes to increasing uh, strength for your, tr for your trunk. So it's just planks on your elbows keeping the, the hips tucked in, the bum down, and just holding that nice strong position for probably for one minute. The most we probably ever held was three minutes straight, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> and then you wanna go onto your right side, making sure you're not sagging for your hip, nice and upright, and then you wanna rotate to your other side, pushing the hips forward, hips up, and holding that nice strong position. Obviously, you want, we want to do workouts that are important to what we do. We don't just want to do weights for the sake of it. Like, we don't do it for the aesthetics. We do it for the performance side of things, so. But don't get me wrong, at the end of, the, <laughs> at the end of a workout, and these are my favorite arm um, workout. So it's just a dumbbell curl and press with a reverse curl at the end. So curl and down. So we're targeting our biceps and also our forearm strength, which is important for gripping a ball or gripping a defender. Weight-wise, I probably stay with high reps, moderate weight. So I want to try and do around 12 kilos, 15 kilos of 12 reps. And it burns. <laughs> Does it get easier? <laughs> uh, maybe some shoulder stuff as well. Some lateral raises, front raises. I love tricep pull downs with the, with the rope. So you're pretty much targeting your whole arm. Perfect for beach weights. <laughs> the older you get as a player, you definitely get a load management thing. You know, it's not a really good tag to, to have, uh, being Philly and looking old, but at uh, the end of the day, you gotta play smart. And um, pre-season, again, is about being safe, um, increasing strength, getting faster, 
and uh, ultimately having a good season after that. Peace.